I don't understand why we have such a, a generational curse. I just feel like there's a curse on my family and I need you to do what I do. I need you to roll your eyes and be like, no, you've cursed yourself because you've taken on the baggage of the ancestors. And honestly, that's a you problem. Welcome back to my channel co-creators. It is Mystic Crane, a resident internet psychic medium and spiritual advisor. And today we are going to be talking about breaking generational curses. Before we jump in, if you would like to get an astrology report or if you would like to book a time with me for a spiritual hour or a coaching session, the links for all of that is in the description box below. So I thought that we would use today to start talking about generational curses and breaking them because I hear from so many of you and you're all like, well, what do I do? A curse was put on me when I was a baby or um, a curse was put on my family. I just know it. I always have bad luck or I saw a psychic and they said that there was a curse on me and now I got to pay a thousand dollars to remove it. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And you know, I hate this one because I hate to see people get scammed and be genuinely taken advantage of, but two, because I really hate victimhood. And if you are going to deal with me, you're going to have to get over it, right? And the reason for that is if you want to be great, you cannot be a victim of your story. You cannot be a hero and be a victim at the same time. They do not work the same way. When we hear about people that we consider heroes, the first person that comes to mind is Martin Luther King. He was assassinated and no one ever refers to him as a victim. You cannot be both. And so it will make sense as to why I said what I said in a second. There is no such thing as a generational curse. And for some people, you're going to breathe a sigh of relief. And some people are going to have a visceral reaction to that because that is not what they've been taught. They have been taught to believe that people can curse them. They have been taught to believe that people have more power than they have over self. And because of that, me saying that is, is like throwing a wrench in the matrix and it's not going to settle well for some people. And they may not like that, right? But the truth of the matter is, you cannot be cursed unless you decide to be cursed. It's that simple. Everything about energy or spirituality in general is will. You have to want to, right? Now, this is not to say that there are not people that have ill intentions that, are, that say, I'm going to curse you. They may have a bad intention. But in order for that curse to go into effect, you have to accept what they have just done. If you simply say, no, sorry, that doesn't work for me, then it doesn't work. It's really that simple. Everything about this world is about will. If you want something, you have to will it. It's that simple. And society teaches us that power lies outside of us. Society teaches us to give up our personal power, to hand it over to something else, someone else, another being or whatever. And we go throughout life feeling like we don't have power over self. And so when we hear words like a curse, or we are threatened that someone's going to curse us and different things like that, we believe it because we feel that we have the power, we lack the power in order to stop it. But the only way a curse can be effective is if you allow it to be effective. You don't have to do some long, drawn out, um, magical ritual in order to stop it. You just have to decide that it will no longer hold power over you. It's that simple. And I understand that that is also something that's really controversial. Sometimes people hear that and they breathe a sigh of relief. Sometimes people hear that and they say, that's not true. My great mommy and her great mammy and, and my great, 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 great grandmother. No, -uh, that's not true. We had to get a pot and it was a cauldron and we had to get three pig's feet, but we had to take it from the pig when the pig was alive. And that was the only way. And we had to sacrifice a lamb and put the blood on top of the door. And that was the only way to get rid of this curse. It's crap. It's all crap. It's not a thing. It doesn't exist. What it does exist is that somebody was successful in manipulating your thoughts and your patterns into believing or into you into believing that you had no power to do anything at all. All you have to do is decide that it doesn't work and therefore it doesn't work. So let's go back to breaking generational curses. I first want to start by saying that it is possible to curse yourself. 
People do it all the time. The easiest example of this is when you wake up and you're already in a bad mood. Anyone ever wake up and then maybe they were running late for work, right? And then, and then they get in the car and then maybe they forgot their wallet and then they go back home to get their wallet, right? And then maybe they go to the gas station because the car is on E and then they realize they don't have enough money to put the a full tank of gas in their car or something like that just goes wrong and they say to themselves, oh man, Today is going to be a bad day. You've just cursed yourself. And then the whole day ends up being bad. You come home and you go, oh, man, I knew it. I just knew it was going to be a bad day. You just cursed yourself. Or you could have woken up, gotten in the car, realized you forgot your wallet and simply said, oh, man, oh, shucks. I just forgot my wallet. Let me Let me go home and go get my wallet. Right. And then you get to the gas station and maybe you don't have enough to fill up your tank. But you know what? Oh, I'm not going to even worry about it. I get paid tomorrow. That's ah, not even that big of a deal. And then you go about the rest of your day and it's a normal day. Right. What changed in that circumstance was your narrative on the situation. You made a decision. You reached a choice point as to what was going to happen to you and whether or not you were going to be affected by what happened to you. And, and choice A, you chose to be affected by it. And choice B, you chose not to be. Choice A, you had a really crappy day. Choice B, you had a normal day. It's the same thing, right? So when you get to a generational curse, a generational curse is a pattern. That's what it is. It's a pattern of behavior. It's a pattern of ideology. Um, and families have a tendency to get stuck in a rut, right? Your great grandparents did things in a certain way. Therefore, your grandparents do things in a certain way. And then your parents do things in a certain way. And then you do things in a certain way. And it's a pattern. And sometimes what happens is your great parents probably didn't make the best choices because they were 21 at once upon a time right and then they take down and then they continue that pattern of behavior have children and then those children consider continue those people's patterns of behavior and sometimes those patterns of behavior are not self-serving sometimes they are uh counterproductive to put it nicely right and then those people have kids and you continue this pattern of behavior and then you wonder why bad things are always happening and the reason is because because no one changed their pattern of behavior, right? Now, this goes back to living in victimhood. If you do not want to repeat a pattern of behavior or a pattern of circumstance, you have a, the, the power to change that. You have the power to make a new decision. You have the power to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what? I'm not going to do what my mother did. I love her, but I'm not going to do what she did. And I'm also not going to do what her mother did. I'm going to make completely different choices for my life as a sovereign being. And I'm going to go about my own way. When you decide to do that, when you decide to make different choices, when you decide to do different things, that is when you break the pattern and that is when you break the so-called generational curse. Now, I'll give you this. There is energy behind this curse. I don't like calling it a generational curse because it's not. It's a pattern of behavior, right? But to entertain the video, there is energy behind it. And the reason why there's energy behind it is because it's patterns of behavior that have been repeated for generations. Of course, there's energies behind the patterns of behavior, right? Even when it comes to breaking our own bad habits, anybody ever try to stop biting their nails? And for them, it's difficult to stop biting their nails because they've been biting their nails ever since they were a kid. There is energy behind that because you've been repeating the same behavior for many, many years. And so, of course, there's energy behind it. And so when you want to stop that pattern of behavior, there's a challenge period in the beginning because what you're doing is stopping the energy that's behind it. So when you are stopping patterns that have been repeated for generations, there may feel like there's some challenge there because you're stopping a, a generational energy. You know, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a curse that's put on you. It's just generational energy that you have the ability to stop. Now, here's the thing. Your ancestors always want the best for you. 
They always want you to be better than what they were. They always want you to make better decisions in this incarnation. Because here's the thing your ancestors have that you don't have. Your ancestors have already graduated from this lifetime. They have moved on. They have done the life review of this of this lifetime. And they are already aware of all of the decisions that they have made that were not the best decisions. And they are also aware of all of the, those decisions that may have poorly affected you. And you know what? they don't want you to be affected by their decisions so if you feel like you want ancestral help and helping you break the pattern because that's really what it is that you're doing they are more than willing to help you and you have their blessing because they want better for you if you're coming up and maybe you were the first generation to maybe go to school maybe you come from a family of immigrants and so you're the first generation in a particular country right maybe you want to raise your children differently maybe you want to live in a different environment maybe you want to have more money or a bigger house or whatever you can do that you don't have to make the same choices that your parents made and their parents made and their parents made right and if you decide to make the same choices that they made and you start to see that the result is the same result that they experience then and you choose not to change your pattern of behavior then at that point you're in victimhood and i can't help you because i cannot do it i cannot do it right so many of us have a hard time accepting the fact that we are the source of all of our problems right I gotta tell you, I remember the first time when I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh my God, my bitch, like you're the problem. It was a very humbling experience to say the least. It was humbling. Oh my God. It was the worst thing I'd have ever experienced to realize that the source of all my misery was me. Right. And look, I can, I can, I can throw the whole thing. I can sit here and say ancestors this ancestors that mother issues this daddy issues that because you know who has them all of us you're not special right but i had to get to a point where i had to say in spite of all that in spite of all that i'm still who i am and then after that i had to change my language because i used to think that oh i made it out okay i turned out okay in spite in spite of all of that in spite my mother being who she is and in spite my father being who he is in spite of all of that i'm who i am and i don't think i turned out half bad and then i had to change my language and realize that no you are who you are because of your mother and because of your father and even though it didn't make sense at the time or even though it may have hurt at the time that you turned out really awesome because those two beings were what they were and if they had created a different circumstance for you you would have not turned out to be who you are today and honestly you guys it's one bad mamma jamma okay but i wouldn't have been a bad mamma jamma if all of it didn't happen the way it happened it happened the way it had to happen for me to be who i am and so you have to start reframing your narrative on everything okay so you got an uncle johnny that's hooked on opioids you know how many people got an uncle that's hooked on opioids no for real that's not like that's not a joke right like i'm saying this to say that like your problems aren't new and family problems aren't new but not everybody looks at their family problems as a curse. And you can see the difference between who does and who doesn't. And it's very no noticeable. Some people said, well, you know, that sucks, but I'm gonna keep going because I want to create the life that I want to create for myself. And some people said, it's because those people messed up, which is why I'm terrible. This is why I have a terrible life. And they pick victimhood and that's why they're miserable. Right. So you have to reframe the narrative and how you see curses. A generational curse is simply a pattern. Change the narrative. Change the words you use. Don't call it a generational curse. Call it a family pattern. It's a pattern of behavior. It's a pattern of ideologies. And if you don't want to participate in that pattern, you don't have to. And that is how you break it by choosing not to participate in the pattern. Now, I have a story that I want to share with you guys because, you know, I'm highly psychic. 
And I'm saying all of, of this to say not to be on a high horse, but because I have been there, done that, I have learned, and so now I teach. The only way to teach is to learn. I too used to believe that there was a generational curse in my family. And for many, many years, I was very miserable because I felt that there was a generational curse and therefore nothing was ever gonna work out for me, right? And I had to have a moment and I had to come to terms and I and I had this like this aha moment where I realized, no, like I'm awesome because of everything that's had to happen. And I also had to detach from everybody else's experience, right? So I can say my mom this, my mom that, my mom this, my mom that. My mom was on her own spiritual journey, just like your mom is or was on her own spiritual journey and she had to fulfill that and that spiritual journey is not my spiritual journey and i can make the decision to choose differently i can make a decision to duplicate that woman in her spiritual journey and be miserable on it because it was never meant to be my path in the first place or i can make the decision to tune into my own personal journey and enjoy that ride. But I have a choice. I can choose to be a victim or I can choose to be a hero, but I can't be both in my own story. I can only be one or be the other. And so I had to choose. And it was a very humbling experience when I chose to be the hero. Now, I dream a lot and look, dead people talk to me in my sleep. Okay, it is what it is. And um, my mother, dearest, likes to pop in from time to time in my sleep. I don't dream about her normally. If I see her, then she's talking to me. And it's really interesting how she does it. So I can be in dream world, just dreaming, dreaming, dreaming. I can be flying. I can be doing whatever it is that I'm doing. And then what happens is that the dream stops. It's like freeze frame. So I'm dreaming. And then like there could be birds flying and then they stop midair. There could be, I can be at a crosswalk walk in my dream and then all the cars stop. Everything stops. It freezes. And then I always know when there's spirit talking to me because my dream will freeze. And then like, that's when I become lucid. And then so in this one particular dream, I'm dreaming, everything stopped, I became lucid. And I turned around and when I turned around, it was all white. And my mom was standing in the middle of it, just smiling at me. And I walked up to her and I said to her, I said, it stops here. And she said, what stops here? <laughs> and I said, um, I don't remember what I, I, I don't think I called it a curse. I think I said all of it, like all the family stuff, it stops here. I'm not doing it anymore. Um, um, I don't like, I, uh, I don't want to, I'm, or maybe I did call it a curse. I, it was so long ago. I don't remember what I call it, but essentially the conversation was about this thing that I had identified as this generational curse. And what I was trying to say to her was I'm done. Like it ends, I'm breaking it. I'm ending the cycle. It stops here. And I was ranting and raving and like, mom this and mom that. And she just smiled because that's what spirits do. They don't, they don't have judgment anymore. And then when I finished talking to her, she, she looked at me and she said, then it is broken. And then she left and then the dream resumed. And I woke up out of my sleep and it was in that moment that I knew that all what I now know is just patterns of behavior right? But at that time, I had identified it as a curse. I woke up and I had knew that whatever it was, was broken. And it was in that sp space forward that I no longer felt that energy around me. But it was because I wanted it to be broken. I didn't want to do it anymore. I didn't want to repeat the same mistakes. I didn't want to repeat the same patterns. I was like, this is getting old. Enough is enough. And she just said, then it is broken. And that was when I learned that that is how you break it. It's a pattern that you choose not to repeat. That is how I actually learned it. And that is why I'm telling you that it doesn't actually exist. Now, let's talk about patterns. What can that be? Patterns, it can be patterns of behavior. It can be patterns of friendship, how you have friends. Some people are people that have friends that they argue with a lot. Some people are have very harmonious friendships. I'm someone that has harmonious friendships, right? But then I look at my sister. My sister argues with her friends a lot. I've never, I think I've had in my whole life two arguments with friends. Two. That's it. That's it. And I'm the type of person that if I argue with you as a friend, then you're not my friend. Because I don't have to argue with my friends because I love you. Why would I argue with you when I love you? That doesn't make any sense to me, right? And so, um, but friendships can be a way that you repeat a pattern. Um, romantic relationships can be a way that you repeat patterns. So um, the most common one about this is if you are somebody that, uh, that um, has like relationships that 
that that's have a tendency to uh, border on what society would consider unhealthy or maybe even a little abusive. And then you look back into your family history and you see what those relationships are like. Patterns have a tendency to repeat themselves in romantic relationships. Patterns also repeat themselves in education. Sometimes it happens that you have your family that maybe are not as educated. Maybe they didn't go to college and that's something that you aspire to do. And what happens is that you get stuck in a pattern of behavior. Because you didn't see your family go to college, you feel like maybe you can't do it. Therefore, you write it off for yourself and you end up creating a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? And repeating a pattern of behavior so you don't go. And then you go, well, that's a, that's a generational curse. There's never any resources to go to college. That's not true. Resources open up and present themselves to you when you choose to do something. But you first have to make the decision to do it. Why would resources be there if you haven't made this decision to do it? So education can be one way it repeats themselves. Work it can repeat patterns. Um, You'll notice sometimes in families that a lot of people in a family are all in the same profession. They all have the same job. I see this a lot when it comes to nursing. I see families kind of repeat that going to nurse, going to like nursing school or whatever, um, mostly because somebody in the family did it. And that's all the information that they have to share. They don't know how to do anything else because they didn't go to school for something else, right? But they can coach you how to get through nursing school. school. May not be able to coach you how to get through like, I don't know, I don't know, mechanic school to like be an awesome mechanic. They may not be able to do that because they don't have that knowledge. And so because of that, you go, all right, well, I'll just go to nursing school because that's because you're for whatever reason, you don't think to yourself to go, all right, I'm going to Google something else, right? This is an easier option because this person has the information. I'm just going to do what they told me to do. And then you kind of repeat this work cycle that happens. So cycles can be repeated anywhere. I've also noticed moods can be repeated in cycles. So if you have anybody that has anyone in the family that's like a little testy, right? And then you go, oh, yeah, but you know who used to be like that? Our grandpa used to act like that. Our grandpa used to act just like that, right? And it's like testy, irritable behavior. Now, is that kind of behavior productive? Not really. Is that behavior going to get you far in life? Probably not. And if you can identify that it's not productive, why continue to behave that way if you have the ability to make another choice? So do you guys understand what I'm saying? What you're doing is breaking up patterns of behavior. And it may be a lot of patterns that you have to break up. Now, here's the kicker. Everybody that's a spiritual being, the majority of you are going to be tasked with breaking your generational pattern, right? Because it is your job to break the mold of everything. It's going to be your job to run against the status quo, to challenge every system that has been put into place. Part of the system is going to be families. How we view families, what's considered a family, family units, family environments. That's part of the system. That has to get broken up. And one way to break that up is by breaking up generational patterns and generational patterns of behavior. And a lot of you are going to be the ones in the family breaking that up. Just like a lot of you are going to be feeling like maybe you're the black sheep of the family or no one really understands you in the family. Or maybe you want to do different things in the family and things that they don't understand or they tell you that you're not supposed to be doing, right? That's because they have the ability to see that you are already on the cusp of breaking those patterns because they are so deeply ingrained in the pattern they look at it as like disrespect when it's really just you wanting to do your own thing and also you breaking a generational pattern right now breaking a pattern like I said you're going to come in contact with with challenge energy, right? And when you're breaking a generational pattern, part of the challenge energy is going to come from the family members that are still alive that are participating in that generational pattern right? And so when you try to break it for yourself, because we also have to consider the fact that when you break a generational pattern, you're not breaking the generational pattern for the lineage. You're breaking the generation pattern for self because that's not how you want to live. And by default, you will then break the generational pattern of the lineage because if you choose to have children and then you do, your children are witnessing their parent do something different right? So then they do something different. So it breaks by default, but it's not you tasked with breaking the pattern of the lineage. You're tasked with breaking the pattern for self. And then what happens to the lineage is just the default of what you did for yourself, if that makes sense. I hope this makes sense. You're not here. If you guys were in front of me, I'd be like, hmm?
Are you understanding what I'm putting down? There is no such thing as a generational curse. So for those of you that felt like you had one, you can now breathe a sigh of relief. This is not saying that there's not some trifling people out there that'll try to do something, but it cannot go into effect unless you give it permission to. All you have to say is enough is enough. If you are tired, simply decide that it's enough and you're done and you're gonna do something differently. You're not gonna wait till Monday, unless you're saying this on a Monday. If you're saying this on a Monday, then you start right now, okay? But if you're saying this on Tuesday, do not treat me in this video like a diet, okay? And then wait until next Monday. Start breaking your patterns. If there are patterns that you're, you participate in that you know are toxic, that you know are counterproductive, that you know will not get you where it is that you want to go in life, start to give them up now and make the decision that is enough is an, an, that enough is enough. And the moment you feel that in your heart space is the moment that it is broken. So I hope that that was, that was helpful and that's a little nugget for you to kind of go away and sit and mull over for a little bit because I know I just, I dropped, I dropped a dime on you just now, but you're okay and you have always been okay and so has your family, even if they have made less than responsible decisions. Everybody is on their spiritual journey. Spirit does not have judgment of what's good and what's bad. It's just a journey. It's just an experience. You do not have to internalize the journey of someone else and convince yourself that their journey must be your journey too. You have your own purpose and you have your own journey and you are meant to be great in every aspect of the word and you don't have to take with you the baggage of somebody else and you definitely don't have to take with you the baggage of your ancestors because let me tell you something, they have moved on and for you to carry around their baggage does not make sense. And here's the thing, you will also start to notice that as you start breaking these patterns of behavior for yourself, you'll start to notice other people in your family will start to really sink their sink their nails into what they consider to be a pattern all of a sudden in your family people are going to start coming to you like oh my gosh I don't understand why we have such a, a generational curse I just feel like there's a curse on my family and I need you to do what I do I need you to roll your eyes and be like no you've cursed yourself because you've taken on the baggage of the ancestors and honestly that's a you problem come out of victimhood it's lighter up here I promise you so with that I'm going to let you guys go. And as always, if you like what you see, please subscribe to this channel and I will see you guys soon.